Okay, so recall that there are two types of integrals. The first type is the indefinite integral. And if you recall, this means finding all antiderivatives of lowercase f. So this will be uppercase f of x plus c. As antiderivatives are unique up to a constant. And again, if uppercase f is an antiderivative of lowercase f, which means that the derivative of uppercase f is simply lowercase f. So that is the first integral that we introduced, the indefinite integral of f of x. So the key word here in this case is the word antiderivative. Now the second integral we call the definite integral, and we use a very similar notation. We write the integral from a to b of f of x dx, and this is quite different than the indefinite integral. If you recall by definition, the definite integral of f of x from a to b is the limit of the corresponding Riemann sum. So we let n approach infinity, n recall is the number of rectangles, we have to sum from 1 to an n, f of xi times delta x. And if you recall, as we're summing the height of the function times the width of a rectangle, the limit will yield the area below the curve, f between a and b if f is positive, and the negative of the area when f is negative. So this is the net area below the curve between a and b. So we have our two integrals, the indefinite integral, finding all antiderivatives to the original function lowercase f of x, the definite integral from a to b, finding the net area below the curve between x equals a and x equals b. So on the surface, the two integrals are very different. One consists of antiderivatives, the other consists of finding areas under curves. So they look completely different from one another. And yet we're using a very similar notation. So this may suggest that perhaps there's something more going on here. Perhaps there is a connection between the indefinite and the definite integral. And the answer is that yes, there is a connection. And this is quite a profound connection because we are connecting, and this we will call the fundamental theorem of calculus, And we use the word fundamental because we are connecting two notions that seem on the surface completely disconnected. The notion of antiderivatives, right? Finding a function whose derivative is the original function, so essentially inverting the derivative. And in the other case, we're talking about areas under curve. So on the surface, the two notions are completely different. So these two integrals are again, on the surface, completely disconnected. And what the fundamental theorem of calculus says is that there is a deep connection between antiderivatives and areas under curves. And here's the connection. So we start with the definite integral, so the integral of lowercase f of x dx from a to b. And the only assumption here in this theorem is that lowercase f of x is assumed to be continuous on the interval from a to b. If that's the case, then we can find the net area below f between a and b, again using the limit of the Riemann sum, but we can obtain this net area in a much simpler fashion. 
And the fundamental theorem of calculus states that we can bypass the Riemann sum completely and instead use the antiderivative to lowercase f. And if we simply take any antiderivative of lowercase f and evaluate the antiderivative at the upper bound of integration minus the antiderivative at the lower bound of integration, we obtain the definite integral. And again, the only requirement for uppercase f is that it is some antiderivative of lowercase f. So if uppercase f prime is lowercase f of x, and as I've previously stated, and the function f is continuous on a to b. So again, think about why this is such a fundamental and amazing result. And that is for two reasons. First, we are connecting what appears to be unconnected notions. On the left, we're talking about the net area under a curve. On the right, we're talking about a difference of antiderivatives. And yet, with antiderivatives, we can obtain the net area under a curve. So these two notions are deeply connected. And the second, which is a more practical reason, is this provides us a much simpler way to obtain the area under a curve. We can completely bypass the limit of the Riemann sum, and we simply have to find one antiderivative of lowercase f. And if we have this antiderivative, f of the upper bound minus f of the lower bound gives us the area below f of x between a and b. So this is a, an amazing result for these two reasons. And we abbreviate the name of the result simply as FTC, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus.